Hi, how's everyone today? Hi, doing well. Thank you. Hello, how are you? Fine, I'm doing good. Thank you. Well, today I will be um, learning more about the sign language um, interpreter program. That's how we have it, right? Yes. Correct. So then I will begin by introducing our guest speakers, our faculty from the ASL program here at South Texas College. So we have Jovan Delgado. She's an avid educator coordinator of the interpreter training programs. She's also a business owner, business mentor, and a current doctoral candidate at Our Lady of the Lake University. She has over 28 years experience working with our amazing deaf community. She is the proud owner of South Texas Interpreters for the Deaf LLC, and she's even more proud of the students that she has helped educate become amazing professionals. That's great, Jovan. So now I'm going to introduce George Solis, George or Jorge. How do you like to be called, George or Jorge? I answer to both, George and Jorge. Both. <laughs> okay, so let's see. George is also an instructor for the interpreting training program and deaf support specialist programs at South Texas College as well. He's state certified language interpreter through the Board of Evaluation of Interpreters, BEI. He has over 20 years experience of community interpreting. He has served as a staff sign language interpreter at South Texas College and has also held the position of ADA coordinator for South Texas College. It is an honor to provide equal access to communication for the deaf and hard of hearing community. Something George shared with us as well. So let's go ahead and get started. I have a couple of questions to ask you. You could either answer them together. You could add, take uh, some time to one will take one, we'll take the other. It's up to you all how you all wanna handle this. Okay, as I'm going through, if you guys have anything else you think it's very important to share that it may not be covered in these questions, please feel free to share that with our students um, for them to learn more about what the program um, is about and what South Texas has to offer, South Texas College has to offer them. All right, so the first question begins is how long are your programs? Okay, well, we have uh, two programs that, that, that we do teach here at the uh, Interpreter Training Program. The first one is a two-year program in Associates of Applied Science, and that is the Interpreter Training Program. That is the one that we train our students to go into the workforce to become sign language interpreters. They facilitate communication between hearing and deaf consumers. Okay. And the other program that we have is the Deaf Support Specialist. That is the one-year certificate program. And with that program, instead of only facilitating communication, which is still very important to know the, the language, the uh, American Sign Language, the Deaf Support Specialists, which we call DSS, they, they provide advocacy for uh, the uh, deaf consumers. So the, in the interpreter training program, we provide communication. It's a communication access. In the Deaf Support Specialist, it's we provide advocacy. For example, let's say that um, there is a deaf consumer that needs to go to, to go see a doctor, but the doctor refuses to provide a sign language interpreter for them. As a DSS, we go and we educate the doctor's office, we educate the community as the reason why the deaf consumer needs the sign language interpreter. We talk about um, the reason that is needed, and number two, um, that it's a law. We we follow the ADA law when it when it comes to that. Pretty okay. much that. Okay. Now I have a question. Um, why are they called consumers? Not not like a, a person that needs the service, or maybe some other people may call them patients, um, or just why the term consumer? Um, well, I mean, the, the, the word consumer is just out of uh, re respect because they're, if they're not really a customer, they're not really a client, they're just someone that we provide a service for, so we call them consumers. Pretty much it. Okay, thank you. Uh, do you want to add anything else, Jovan, to, to George's answer? Um, we're proud of both programs. When we started this program, we initially started with the Sign Language Interpreter Training Program, which is the two-year program. And then uh, we had a call from the community of wanting uh, something that's more of an advocate. So like George said, that it's more of an advocate position. Uh, so we're pretty proud of that. Um, we have several who have graduated that have actually gone into the regional school for the deaf program. 
locally and out of the Rio Grande Valley or have gone to work for nonprofit organizations doing exactly what George said they would do is advocating and educating uh, our community on deaf culture, deaf community and deaf services. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you for elaborating uh, on these uh, questions. Number two, what are some important qualities a potential student should have to become a successful interpreter in the field? Um, I'm going to take that one. I can't emphasize enough that they have to have a good vocabulary base. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that uh, for many of us living here, Spanish is predominantly our first language. And I think that's great because if you actually know Spanish and English and you come into this program, you could actually become a trilingual certified interpreter, which is even more valuable. However, we can't emphasize enough that a good vocabulary base is needed. Uh, we always tell our students, read, read, read. Um, because if you're able to understand what a term means, synonymously, you'll be able to understand what it means and put out that sign, uh, depending on the level that it's needed with the registers. So definitely, without a doubt, I, I know George would agree, vocabulary-based English knowledge is very important. Definitely. And you know, I want to add something for this right here when we talk about qualities, because many times when um, somebody comes into my office and they sit here and they say, you know, I want to I want to learn sign language. I want to help the deaf. They use the word helper. And that's something that we stay away from because it says, you know, I have, I have a good quality. I'm a helper. I like to help people. We're not really helpers. We just provide equal access is really what it is. Because many times the deaf community will feel that if, you know, say, well, I'm going to help you. It means that that there's something that I need help with. So you're going to help me with it. So you're a little bit better than me. And we don't want to do that. So when we go through our classes, we make sure that our students understand it's not that we're helping somebody. We're just providing equal access through communication. And that's really all it is. Yeah, good. And because they're not any less or more of a regular, like a speaking person, correct? Correct. Okay, sounds good. Um, great. Are there any tests a potential student should have in order to begin the sign language interpreter program? Well, well here at, at South Texas College for the one year program, the deaf support specialist, you don't need any kind of um, uh, exam to to start the uh, the program because it, it's just a one year program. But for the interpreter training program, the two year program, you do have to take the uh, TSI. That that is something that you do have to take so that the college will know where to place you. Because when you're taking classes through the interpreter training program, you do have some core basic classes like composition, um, psychology, so social work, biology, all these classes that do um, the state of Texas does require a certain amount of reading level and stuff like that. So for the ITP, the interpreter training program, yes, uh, you need the, your, your TSI or something that is comparable to that. And for the one year, you don't. You don't need a, an exam. So then um, this the for the two year program that you all offer, the student can then go on and getting a bachelor's degree in interpreting. Are there universities that they could go and transfer to get a bachelor's degree in interpreting? There are universities. Um, there are several, but they the ones that we highlight um, are actually online. OK, and it's one particular one. Um, that actually takes about 90% of their credits here from STC and transfers over. So the students who have attempted that degree have told me that they, they have started at the junior level. Um, now you have to remember, we are an associate of an applied science, as George stated, which means our degrees do not transfer to four-year universities. However, that university, and I know several people who have obtained that degree as well, um, is a bachelor's of applied science. Right. So it's not a bachelor's of arts. So they technically take in everything and our students jump in there at a junior level. Uh, we do have several who have graduated from that university. Um, George, you want to add anything? 
No, I, I, I agree with you. And, and I just I did want just to emphasize what Jovan said is that we are uh, an associates of uh, applied science. So many times that because uh, our, our program is geared for you to go to the to the workforce. Right. But a lot of our students do want to go for their four year degree or their master's. And sometimes when they go into the university, they will have to take an extra class or they do have to repeat a class that was not transferred from here. Um, but when we advise our students, we definitely make that that clear to them. But yeah, you know what Jovan said, some of these universities that are online, they are uh, pretty much accepting uh, all the accredits that, that our students have taken here at STC. Which is great because that's the idea that we want to uh, enforce and let our students know that that's, you know, you did two years here, look for universities that will take those credits. And you said 90% is still a good number of classes that they take, which is excellent. Great, thank you. Now, this, this is probably a two-part question here. If ASL, which is American Sign Language, is not a universal language, what concept do potential students have about ASL? Um, I'll start that one off. The, the concept that everyone, I would say, has about ASL that is that it is universal. Okay. That once you learn it one way, that it applies to every region or every person that they ever meet. And that is totally not true. So there are different forms of ASL. And, and besides the obvious, which are there different forms of ASL or sign language throughout our continent, even just focusing here within Texas, um, focusing here within Texas, if you go up to like Austin, for example, you're going to notice there's a different form of communication that they use there in Austin compared to here in the Rio Grande Valley. Really? Yeah, and, and I like to compare it to like accents. You know, when you meet somebody within Texas who's from up north Texas, they have an accent. Yes. And if you're not from South Texas, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Same exact thing. It doesn't mean that the whole language is different. There's just key terms and stuff that they use up there that is not used here. So, and that's just local. We're just talking about Texas, okay? Right. Of course, um, when you go throughout the United States, there's different signs for different words that they have developed in their region, in their states. So just in the, within the United States, it's not completely the same. However, of course, if we're looking outside of the United States, yes, definitely, there are tons of different forms of sign language. Yeah. And you know, like one, one good example that Jovan is talking about, just even here in the United States, uh, that we use regional words, is like the word soda. You know, some people say soda, you know, I'd like to drink, I would want to drink a soda. Other people call it a pop. And I remember being up north and I would call it a soda or we call it a Coke. And they would be like, no, that's wrong. It's called a pop. It's a soda pop. You know, so just being like in a different state here in the United States, the just like in the English language and the ASL language, you have different uh, variety forms like that as well. And um, I remember just and people telling me, oh, because you know sign language, you can communicate with anybody in the world who knows sign language. And of course, the answer is no, because like Jovan said, every language has its own sign language. Right, 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 right. Like you said, it's, it also de deals with like the culture that we're in. You know, you, you yeah. brought up a good point. North Texans speak a little bit differently than us down here in the valley. People from New York, the they speak way different from us down yeah. here. So you could definitely see see that. That that's great. That's great. Great. So then let's, let that leads me to the next question. What are or can you all name three misconceptions potential students may have ASL? So I guess one is if it's if it's universal, that could be one, okay. right? What uh, what would you all consider would be um, another? misconception. I'm just going to reiterate what George had said earlier is that help mentality. We have that they come in here that I want to help. I, I want to help. And and you know and we get quite a bit of people that say um, I want to help within my church. That's totally different. I mean oh. that's that that mentality that heart that servant's heart is totally different from the realm of the professional interpreter. I'm not saying professional interpreters don't have a servant's heart, but what I'm saying is that we have to understand that we are not helpers there, like George said. So definitely ASL is universal. 
without a doubt, the helper mentality. And then they also, when they come in for advising, what puts us different, uh, separates us from an ASL, American Sign Language, two-year Associate of Arts degree that will transfer to the university as opposed to ours, is we teach you through our curriculum of what our BEI, which is the state uh, organization that certifies you, there's different forms of interpreting that you need to learn. Um, and students don't know that. When we tell them that there's interpreting, which is ASL, there's transliteration, which is more of an English format, you know, and then there's sign divorce, there's site translation, there's interactive interpreting. And we start telling all that, they're looking at us like, what are you talking about? I thought it was just ASL. So the misconception, once they come in here and they sit down and we share everything that we're going to teach you, that's when they look at us and they, their, their help, helper mentality, I can see it just fly out the window because they're just sort of like, oh my gosh, that's a lot. You see what I mean? Right. So those are definitely misconceptions is they think that, um, or they feel, oh, I took ASL one, two, three, and four at a, a university. So I can come into your program and jump into your ASL five. And we're like, no, you cannot uh, until this day, unless George has had one, I've never had a student that has been able to come in and jump into that because there's two totally different curriculums that are being taught. So there's a, a lot of misconceptions, but those are a few. So then with my finger spelling, I can't get by a conversation. Correct. And and that, that's, that, that's another misconception that people think that, that sign, because sign language is more of a concept. It's signed as a concept. And people think it's signed either word for word or you fingerspell everything. Right. And American Sign Language is really not that. There, there is some parts where you do fingerspell proper names, uh, certain things. But when it comes to the actual signing of the language, it's it's more of a concept. It's not word for word. I just wanted to make it clear, like maybe yeah. with my fingers, but I could get by, but I guess I, I can't, right? <laughs> Don't call us if you can't, okay? Oh, okay. Well, I'll delete y'all's <laughs> number then. <laughs> well, thank you. Okay, next question is, what is the career path upon graduation for a student who successfully completes all requirements for the program? What happened to him or her? Um, I graduated, so what, what's going to be next? Um, I'll start. I know George can help on that as well. Definitely, um, they're needed within the public school systems, regional school for the deaf. Now, I want to say probably about, give or take, about maybe five to seven years ago, majority of our deaf students went to regional school for the deaf, which are school-based where uh, deaf students are I don't want to say housed, but they are picked up. So if they live in like Roma, Rio Grande City, Mission area, they're picked up and they're brought to McAllen School District where they have certain schools that are labeled as regional day schools where deaf students are. Same thing, I think we go all the way up into Westlaco, if I'm correct, right? Mercedes, it's Mercedes all the way up. Okay, Mercedes all the way to Roma is comes to McAllen, right? And then from La Feria and all that other Cameron County region is Brownsville. Right. However, recently we've had a growth within our public school systems where parents are saying, I no longer want my child going to regional school for the deaf. I want them going to the public school systems that are here where I live. You know, if I live in Mercedes, I want him to go to the elementary school that's right here by my house instead of taking him to McAllen. So with that said, public school systems have now started to hire their own interpreters as well on staff. So they're needed within regional school for the deaf, public school systems. They're needed at colleges and universities. Um, I know here at STC, I don't know the specific number because it the, the need is tremendous, but we have a lot of graduates who work here and who work at UTRGV at both campuses. Uh, TSTC, we have a need in the community. I can't emphasize how much is needed with community and job trainings. Texas Workforce Commissions, um, IRS appointments, Health and Human Services, hospitals, um, doctor's appointments, everything that we do on a daily basis. I have a dental appointment, you know, I have to go to the dentist. Well, the interpreter's there. 
you know, I'm going to go open up a bank account. You know, I need a new bank account. The interpreter's there. I need to go sign papers for my mortgage. The interpreter's there. I need everything that goes on. The interpreter's there. And then um, I can't go without mentioning video relay service, which is an excellent opportunity for our graduates. And we do have some graduates that work there here in the McAllen area and have moved out to the Corpus and have moved out to San Antonio area, Houston area with other VRS companies. So um, the, the need is tremendous. We, we wish uh, we had more certified interpreters than what we do. We, the, it is, the need is just tremendous. I can't emphasize it enough. Definitely. And then on the deaf service support specialist part of it, even though it's a, it's a one year program and we know that a one year program is not going to get you a job as a manager or anything like that for, for an agency, but it does help uh, supplement whatever other kind of education you have or experience. We have some of our students that have been hired through uh, job agencies, like people who look for jobs for, um, for either people that have a disability or anybody who does need, need a job. And they are part of the uh, job training, the job interview skills that go on in that agency. So you can work for a nonprofit agency, you can work for a profit agency, definitely work at the regional school for the deaf with your DSS one year. And um, as we've had other, other students that have, that have completed the DSS, but have decided they wanna go the social work route, they get hired because they're more marketable because of the fact they've learned about the deaf culture. They've learned how to work with deaf consumers. And when there's a company, like I'm just gonna make up a company, let's say Panasonic, that does hire uh, deaf consumers, somebody that has the the education, the, the training that have to do with the deaf culture is definitely more marketable and will be right. hired for something like that. Right. It, it's another language, you know, ultimately yeah. it's another language, you know, that's why we so, emphasize be bilingual, be bilingual, in this case, the person, the graduate will be trilingual. Yes. And that's, that's a big asset. That's what would be a good big asset to the company. Now, just real quick, I want to go back when you said the regional schools for the deaf in the school district. You said the kid, uh, the, the student, the, the child, if we're in the elementary age, more or less, um, they're from Roma. They get bus from Roma to a school in McAllen. Yes. The, the districts provide those services. Yes. Wow, that's very interesting. Very, very. And it's it's a great idea, you know, because the, you know, they will be having someone they will not be lost. You know, like a typical child that comes from Mexico, that they don't know the language, and and of course they have a bilingual programs, but here you have they come to the school, and um, they will be bused and have the same same um, lessons, same lectures from a a speaking a hearing speaking person, correct? Correct. Right. I, I do want to emphasize something that we are proud of uh, here in McAllen, our regional day school program for the deaf here. I want to say about 90% of their staff sign language interpreters are graduates from our program. So I'm, I'm very proud about that. I know George and I, I mean, and they need more. They need more. I mean, when we meet with these admins, they emphasize to us how badly they need them. And I mean, that really, gets us going because we know the need is there. We right. know there. So I, I, here in the McAllen area, we've got about 90%. I do want to emphasize as well that um, at colleges, local colleges, I want to say probably about 90% of our contract part-time interpreters are from our programs as well. That's great. That's great. But of course, the more you all have, the better you all going to be able to put out in the community for people to hire them. Right. Correct. That's, that's great. So then um, I think this one you probably answered it already, but I, if you have anything else to add, I'll, I'll ask it, is what is the job outlook after completion of the program? Well, um, definitely here in Texas, there's always a need. There's always a need for sign language interpreters. We don't have enough, especially not, not maybe not at the big cities, but in, the, in the smaller cities. You know, there, every time that we go to our state uh, conferences, mm -hmm. that, that's always one of the, um, the issues is that there's never, uh, we don't have enough interpreters to go around in the state of Texas. So that's, that's always, you know, good to know that the, the, um, the job opportunity is there. 
Um, and, and I know Jovan's been mentioning here in the Valley that, you know, how, how much we work here in the Valley. Some of our students have even left the Valley. So if anybody is interested in leaving, which we hope not any of our students do, but our students have left and they're working either in Austin, San Antonio, one of our DSS, um, of course, she got married and followed her husband, but she's doing some case management in New York wow. for, for an agency as a DSS. You know, so we do have our students who do leave the Valley, but you know, we definitely encourage them to stay here with us. We right. want them to definitely work here with our with our deaf consumers uh, locally, right, right. without a doubt. Uh, we also have uh, graduates who are now teaching at the University of Houston in the interpreter training program. I'm, I'm very proud to say that. We have uh, some that work for Amazon as sign language staff interpreters. We have many that work for video relay service companies, um, school districts, Houston, San Antonio, Dallas, Fort Worth. So, I mean, and George is right. We wish they wouldn't go, but they do. And I mean, we can't keep them, you know, because right. we want them to stay here, but uh, mm -hmm. they follow, they get married and they want a life, you know, heaven forbid. And uh, so they do go, but uh, that's okay because we keep training more and more and we're going to start putting a little detector on them. So it starts beeping once they cross, get close to the Falfurias line. Yeah, I don't know how well they will take that, but uh, that's a good idea. <laughs> good, good. Um, are there any licenses, certifications, and or registrations an interpreter should have? You know, much like a teacher, you need to be licensed by the state. You know, they need to have their their certifications and what have not. Does it apply the same to an interpreter? Yeah, it does, and I, and I'm sure Jovan can uh, can elaborate on this. But I I wanna one thing that I do wanna say is that um, even though we do need since the, the Americans with Disabilities Act, the law, the way it has it written right now, it says as long as the interpreter is qualified, uh -huh. they can do certain type of, of interpreting assignments. Okay, so not everybody is certified. But yes, there, there are, there are some, some uh, certifications that, that, that we do need. And I know maybe in the next couple of years, the, the law is going to change that everybody does have to be certified. Both Jovan and I are BEI certified. But Jovan, you want to talk, talk about, a little bit about the BEI or the NIC? Yeah, so um, once you come into our program, um, to become state certified, it's a two-part. So mm -hmm. after 30 hours, college hours, you uh, should, we recommend you take the test of English proficiency, which is something like an SAT. Okay. So, and that's through the state. So they come, and a while back ago, we had it set up where they came and they really, really blessed us because they came down from Austin and they offered it to us here at STC. So our students were able to take that test of English proficiency sure. in the auditorium, which was amazing. Yeah. Um, so upon passing that TEP, which is the first step to becoming certified, uh, upon completion, and we say because once they're graduated, they're done, um, we want them to take the state certification. You know, like George and I tell our students, you know, you wouldn't like you use the teaching profession. Who would want to go to, you know, a university and study to be an elementary educator, but, oh, I'm not going to take the state, so I don't need to become a certified teacher. Well, then what did you do it for? You see what I mean? So, of course, same thing with us is we definitely say you pass the TEP. Now, once you're close to completion of the degree, let's send in the paperwork to get state certified. Mm -hmm. um, so that is for Texas BI. Now, we also have the National Interpreter Certification and the NIC uh, now is requiring that you have a bachelor's degree uh, minimum so that you can take that national interpreter certification. I am proud to say that one of our graduates recently became NIC certified. Um, he's an amazing interpreter, amazing interpreter. And uh, he just let us know, I think it was about a month ago, right, George, that he, yeah. he is now nationally certified. So, um, and I'm sure, I know that there's more out there. It's just, he's still here. So we're like trying to keep him here, you know? <laughs> but so, like I said, the BEI is a twofold, um, and this is, we'll go back to again to reiterating how important vocabulary is, you know, and your content based, your, your knowledge of vocabulary and what it means, because some of those questions on that test gives you a word and says, okay, what are, what does this word mean? 
uh, synonymously. So you've got to pick a synonym that means that exact same thing. But if you don't even know what this word means, how are you going to know what these are? So it's super important uh, that they have a good vocabulary uh, content base. Um, and then the NIC. Now we also have the Educational Interpreter Preparation, which is an EIP um, uh, certification, and that's more education based. I do have some interpreters that live here that do have that certification as well. However, and I may be wrong about this from what I was told was that they're still not in the process of really, um, I don't want to say accepting it, but viewing it as the same as a BEI or a NIC. They're, they're not recognizing it. They're not, yeah, they're not recognizing it. I mean, they recognize because it's, it's a tough certification. But when it comes to, um, let's say, human resources, because I think they don't know much about it yet, that it's it's still in the makings of trying to educate our community. There we go about that certification. Right, right, right. Well, that's good. Now, like everything else, you're certified. You are more marketable than a non-certified person, correct? Oh yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. And is there is, would there be a difference as well as the earnings that a certified interpreter will make versus a non-certified interpreter? Like you said, you don't need it, but if you have it, it's better. So I like everything else. The earnings, would it be more having it or will it be less not having it? That's also a difference a person will face. Um, I, I will share with you, and, and I always try not to, to put on two hats working here at STC. Right. But I will share with you about agencies. Um, once an interpreter becomes certified, their mm -hmm. pay doubles. Wow. It doubles. So, and that's for your first level, your basic certification. So, once they become certified, that pay doubles. Right. So, that is a huge incentive for these interpreters to become certified. Is they, they double in pay. Right. But I, I think also another... Um, Maybe just uh, advice would just be if you're going to be a person that is interested in the field, don't do it for the money. Do it for the passion that you have in assisting, not helping. I learned that in assisting a person that needs the assistance from you that you're trained to do. Because right. I think that also has a lot to do with it, right? The mindset of an interpreter. I'm sorry. I said we use the term facilitating. Facilitate, okay, because yeah. I think the, the 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 interpreter will also show if they're happy at their job versus the person that's like, well, it's going to make me, you know, have a nice car, a nice home, but you're not going to be happy doing it because I think that also the the consumer will feel that as well when they they're facilitating them, correct? Exactly. Exactly. Yes. yes. Do y'all have anything more to add to anything, any uh, any any advice for a, a person wanting to start the program and they're a little bit hesitant, I don't know if I should become an interpreter, I don't know if I should go into another field, what advice do you have for a person wanting to start or at least learning more about becoming an interpreter? What, what can you tell them? Okay, well, I... I... For me, the best thing is for them to come to the office, make an okay. appointment, come to the office, sit down and talk Ooh. to us. And only because some people have different um, different questions for different reasons that they would like to become an interpreter. So um, definitely, I mean, I would I would invite people to come over to my office. I'm here at the Pecan Campus mm -hmm. in Building Y, 3.2.302N. Uh, and my phone number is 956-872-5601. My email address is jls262 at southtexascollege.edu. So definitely get a hold of me or get a hold of Jovan if you're interested. We can definitely set up an appointment, do it through Zoom, phone call, in person, whatever is best for you. Okay, sounds good, Jovan. Um, Pretty much what George said, um, <clears throat> he kept saying my office and I'd say Zoom, Zoom, because but we, we have had students come in here and, and we take all precautions, you know, six foot distance, you know, we just air pump kind of thing. Uh, but we do have students who have tons of questions. And like I said before, once we start explaining the program, their questions just keep growing and growing and growing. They're like, what? You know, what is this? So 
Um, and we've done a lot of Zoom advising. So if Zoom is the way to go, they can email us. George didn't advertise me, so I guess I have to advertise myself. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. This is your time to shine, Jovan. That's why we want to do it on your own. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so I, would, I, I would really just recommend an email. I think email is the best way to go. So. Uh -huh. You would uh, email George or myself. My email is uh, Javon D, and that's J O V O N N E D, as in David, at SouthTexasCollege.edu, and uh, we can Zoom. And I know George has also experienced it. I've experienced it. I am not against people who contact us through social media. If for some reason you say, I just don't remember this email address, I'm not going to rewind this video, I'm not going to watch the other 37 minutes to get her to where they say their contact. Look us up on social media, send us a private message, and we'll definitely meet with you guys. Great, that's great. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate this on behalf of the library here at South Texas College and also the American Sign Language. Um, no, actually, what did we say the, the correct term is? Sign the language. Sign Language Interpreter Program right. at South Texas College. I appreciate it tremendously your time for talking to us and speaking to us and educating us about the program that STC offers our students and anyone can come and join. It doesn't, they don't have to be fresh out of high school. It could be a retired uh, grandma, grandpa wanting to start the program. They're open at any age to come, correct? Correct, yes. yes. Awesome. Definitely th thank you, Angelica, for allowing us to provide this information as well. Yeah. Thank That's, you. Now, I appreciate it tremendously. So. Um, hopefully you'll all get more calls and I want your phones to be off ringer and your emails with a thousand uh, mails in your inbox after this. So um, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.